So um, I'm currently uh, a specialist registrar um, or an academic clinical lecturer, which I believe in the US is very similar to an, a sort of a, a fellow, um, but I have 50% protected research time and my interests are predominantly autoimmune uh, cholestatic liver diseases, primary biliary cirrhosis, PBC, and primary sclerosis and cholangitis, PSC. Um, and I've just completed my PhD, waiting for my uh, defence, um, and that's pretty much me really. <laughs> So the main reason I did was, um, certainly in my opinion, it's, it's perhaps the most enigmatic uh, of the chronic liver diseases. We don't know why individuals develop PSC. It's not caused by a virus. It's not caused by overeating, like fatty liver disease. It's not caused by alcohol. It's not caused by a genetic, one single genetic mutation. So we don't really know why people get it. We do not know which individuals are going to progress and which individuals are going to do well and there is no currently established therapy which has been shown to slow disease progression with a significant proportion of individuals necessitating liver transplantation uh, or reaching early mortality and those who don't um, may also develop uh, significant complications such as colorectal cancer 30 percent lifetime incidence or hepatobiliary malignancy which is about a 15 percent lifetime incidence and we have no way of predicting who's going to get it and or, or preventing it developing. So that's because of the enigma that it is, that's the reason I've, I, I, that has piqued my interest. So the vast majority of individuals with primary sclerosis and cholangitis, at, at least in the Western world, have coexisting inflammatory bowel disease. And in most circumstances, it's a form of colitis, large bowel inflammation. And indeed, about so we see um, colitis um, in about 80% of people whom we diagnose with PSC. Some people have PSC diagnosed first based on symptoms or abnormal liver blood tests as part of a routine health screen and later we find that they have colitis that hasn't yet manifested itself. But almost inevitably there is a, 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 um, an inflammatory bowel disease background. Um, and if you were to look at things the other way, um, about 10 to 15% of individuals with inflammatory bowel disease with colitis will get PSC. So certainly in inflammatory bowel disease individuals who have subtle elevations in liver biochemistry, um, it's worth screening those individuals as well. So for individuals who have inflammatory bowel disease, um, part and parcel of their regular follow-up will involve liver biochemistry uh, blood testing. And in those who have parameters in keeping with particularly cholestasis, such as an elevated alkaline phosphatase or ALP, uh, those individuals one would suspect as having evidence of PSC. Um, symptoms can be very non-specific and can be associated uh, and can be associated with other factors, but certainly a back sort of things like pruritus itch. Um, an overwhelming fatigue and the absence of significant anemia is another symptom which we often see in PSC patients. Um, PSC is predominantly a disease of non-smoking individuals unlike many other chronic illnesses so, and so, so is ulcerative colitis. We very rarely see smokers who develop PSC so certainly non-smoking individuals with colitis it's, um, um, it's more common than smokers. Smoking prevents uh, disease flares in colitis. Um, I'm not going to necessarily say it's protective, it's just that we just don't see it. So it's an epidemiological observation rather than a preventative, preventative measure. It's just like men, for example, so men in the 40s more commonly get PSC. We do see uh, sort of quite a lot of women as well, but it's, it's a male predominated disease that occurs in the 40s, uh, or the fourth decade of life rather. Um, so, it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that women are protected from it, it just means that you know, we see less of them from an uh, observation point of view.